And we are back on the Artie Lang Show. Craig Kilborn in the house. And Craig is going to be uh, guest hosting tomorrow night. So uh, look forward to that. Jay, how are you? Jay. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. All this right. is fun. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time. Yeah. New York City's wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about rock and roll here. We're talking about some uh, uh, amazing experiences you've had as a rock and roll photographer. We get to go places that a lot of people don't get to go. You, yeah. You've got this great new book out called Jam. Uh, no, no, you shot the Rolling Stones. You get to hang with the Rolling Stones? Uh, I've met them very quickly, briefly, but I, no, I don't you get, get to hang with them. You get starstruck when you meet a Mick Jagger, <laughs> when you meet a uh, Keith Richards? Do you start to... Do I try not to. But is it something that happens that you try to, you try to... Yeah, it can. But in, in general, like when I'm doing a photo shoot, like I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm down to business, you know, if I'm like one-on-one -on -one doing a photo shoot, like I've got to be dialed in, you know, and... So and, at this point, is it because of your familiarity with a lot of big names that you're a little bit jaded to where it's not as I, big a I, deal? No, I don't or think I'm jaded. Or is it still a big deal? I, it's still a big deal. I mean, I would love to do a portrait of Mick and Keith, you know, like I've shot the Rolling Stones in performance. I've shot a portrait of Keith Richards with John Lee Hooker, which is one of my most epic photos. Keith's got this big puff of smoke going up his nose, out of his mouth. Um, so I've been, you know, this close to Keith. Um, he ignored me. You know, they were talking about what whiskey they were going to be drinking the next day uh. down at Hooker's house. Um, uh -huh. You know, I'd love to do a portrait of Bob Dylan. Um, there's very few people that, you know, I haven't had like a one-on-one -on -one with. Um, right. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good experience, and, and um, I really... I like capturing those moments. You know, it's a, it's it's pop culture history. It, you know, I'm a visual sure. anthropologist, and I like yeah. to be able to capture that. I mean, I'm building an archive. I'm building an archive of you know what I consider important pop culture history. Right. So there's really no drugs backstage anymore. Really, <laughs> I. Nah, I think there's maybe some marijuana. Oh yeah. Okay. But um, but beyond that, you know. What happened with Nirvana? You had an opportunity to shoot? Yeah, many years ago, um, they were doing a little in-store performance on Haight Street in San Francisco at a record store called Rough Trade, and, you know, 50 people in there. And this is actually before Dave Grohl was even in the band. And uh, their booking agent was a friend of mine. She was also the booking agent for the Flaming Lips at the time, and I'd done some early work with the Flaming Lips. She's like, you got to go see this band Nirvana. you got to go. you got to convince them to come to your studio and shoot them. And I had a friend who had, like, this funky warehouse down south of Market in San Francisco, and I gave Kurt Cobain the address and you know they were driving out of town to go to Sacramento I think for a show and and he said yeah yeah I'll be there in you know two hours or whatever we'll be there and then they got lost they couldn't find it you know this is pre cell phone pre Google Maps any of that stuff and they just you know he called me from a payphone you know oh. three hours later I'm sitting in the studio waiting they never showed up and oh. kind of my missed opportunity to do a portrait of Nirvana but I did get to shoot him live a handful of times has that has that, has, has that affected your business, all these cameras everywhere now. People are you know, got cameras in their phones. Their sh every everything is documented. How does that affect you as a professional? It photographer? it does affect you. You know, technology kind of lowers the bar of ent for for entry on all levels. You know, recording recording studios, television studios. Um, you know, photography, anybody who's got a digital camera can think they're a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of clients out there, a lot of people that pay money for photographers for creative services um, maybe can't tell the difference between really great photography and really mediocre photography I think we also live in a world of mediocrity in general Facebook you know there's it's a glut of images that are you know most of them are mediocre there are some things that really stand out and um, so you try your best to be original and creative and unique so that people come back and they do hire you and pay you what you're worth. Does that, uh, does that affect, you know, the magazines like a Rolling Stone? I mean, are they willing to go with someone who's maybe cheaper because they have I don't think a, a Rolling shot. Stone magazine would do that. I think that they have pretty high standards, high but I think standard. there are other magazines that are willing to accept mediocrity yeah. because it costs them less money. Sure. And I think that... You know, that's just the nature of technology and what it's done to it. Wow. So, so you got to put in all the extra time just to make sure you're that much. You got to be really good. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I've shot Jerry Garcia and yeah, I've shot Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, but I'm really only as good as my last photograph that I took yesterday or as good as my last book that I put out. You right. know, I mean, I, I'm really proud of Jam. It's a, you know, there's great text in it. All the artists that are in the book wrote the text for it. So we had like a little four or five wow. question, uh, email questionnaire that we sent out. Some people did it on the phone. Some people re responded. Um, you know, I got this great shot of uh, Kirk from The Roots in here. And, you know, and I've become friends with Kirk over the last year or two because I've been sending him these photos. I, I met him at a show. And I'm like, oh, 
got some great pictures of you. Send me your, give me your email. And he's just like, you know, you take the best photos of me. And I sent him the email with the questions and he gave me this incredible, incredible story. And, and, you know, so I think you're going to be Amazing. on Fallon. Aren't you going to be on Fallon coming up here tomorrow night? Yeah. Tomorrow. Say hi to Kirk for me. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's I'm excited about that. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And now I, I wanted to ask you about the picture. One thing about your pictures is a lot of people like jumping in your photos, a lot of action shots. Yeah. Is, is, is that just your style? You like the action? I do like the action. I like bands that, that are rock and roll. You know, the cover photo is, is uh, My Morning Jacket. And, uh, you know, a couple of people have said to me that they've never seen so much movement in still photographs before. Um, and that's what I like. That's what I, that's, right? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You know, like people like Neil Young, he gets on stage and the body language, you know, I'm looking for body language. I'm looking for, you know, deep knee bends and people, you know, hair and people jumping and, you know, those jumps happen like that. So you got to be ready for it. You know, you've got to anticipate it. You got to be, you know, my little league coach in 10th grade said, anticipate the play. And I've never forget forgotten that. Yeah, that was Wayne you know? Gretzky said that too. That <laughs> Wayne Gretzky said, "Don't skate towards the puck. Skate towards where the puck is going to be." Okay, yeah. so same analogy. Wayne right? Gretzky. Right. I'll, yeah. I'll have to use that. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Well, yeah. my little league coach when I was ten was Mr. Conway. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about all this music these days? This dance music and all of this electronic music. Does that just drive you nuts? Do you yeah, just hate that crap? I just not necessarily hate it. I don't really listen to it. I'm not really a big EDM kind of guy. You know, I'm kind of more of a traditional psychedelic music kind of guy. And I guess the EDM can be a little psychedelic, but so you go take I a picture of a DJ. I think just... my LSD days are behind me. Yeah. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to stick with the music that I've grown up with and, uh, and, and not go out. I'll let my kids do that. Yeah, where can people find uh, you online? So you can, if you want to get a signed copy of Jam from me, you can get it at rockoutbooks.com, rockoutbooks.com. That's my website, and there's a little prompt there with an email address to tell me who to sign the book to. Um, you can get on Amazon. Barnes & Noble's got them here in the city and pretty much, I think, everywhere in the country. They're, you know, it's a nationally distributed book, even though I did self-publish this book, and I did it with a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. Yeah. Now, how's was that? Was that was that pretty cool? Like, how's that work? You just you go out there, you say, "I'm putting this book out," and uh, you have people to make just a, you people to, just send you tons of money. Yeah, you have to put out. A, <laughs> you have to make a little video, and I raised thirty thousand dollars in four weeks because people believed in oh, Jay Blake's work photography. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so that's about eighty percent of what you need to publish a book, and um, so you know that that got me a good part of the way, and um, you know the book is out, and it's doing really well. People are really loving it. And, uh, you know, you can follow me on Facebook at Jay Blakesburg Photography. I post a lot of stuff. I post every day my adventures. If I'm not shooting something new, I'm posting stuff from the 80s and, and, and past years. And people are loving, loving the flashbacks. All right, Jay. Well, thanks Sounds for coming great. on the show and talking to us today. Jay Blakesburg, check out his book, Jam. We'll be back after the break, taking your calls. Give us a call at 888-936-888. Two, two. You're watching The Artie Lang Show. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.